guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about quite an interesting pathology and that is gastroschisis. So let's get started. So what is gastroschisis? Gastroschisis is a birth defect which affects the anterior abdominal wall. In this disease, the baby's intestines extend outside of the body through a hole next to the belly button. The size of this hole is variable and other organs including the stomach and liver may also protrude through this hole. So if you look at my little image down at the bottom, we see the baby's belly button which is somewhere here and we can see the portion of the umbilical cord is still attached and clipped. And just to the right of this is this mass of abdominal content which is usually found inside the body which is now broken through this anterior abdominal wall and is found outside of this child's body. So in gastroschisis, we can have a variety of abdominal organs which are found protruding through this hole and we could have the intestines, the stomach and in some extreme cases, the liver as well. So these organs are actually in contact with the amniotic fluid during the gestational period and once the baby is born, they are in contact with the atmosphere or the air. So this is basically what gastroschisis is. It is a birth defect in the anterior abdominal wall in which the abdominal organs protrude through a hole which is found on the right side of the umbilicus and these organs are exposed during the gestational period with the amniotic fluid and after birth is exposed to the air. So what are the causes and risk factors of gastroschisis? The cause of gastroschisis is currently unknown but experts believe that children with gastroschisis suffer from the disease due to a change in their genes or chromosomes as well as environmental factors such as their mothers who smoke, drink alcohol or are younger than 20 years old during the time of pregnancy. So there's no real cause for the disease but there are a few risk factors being smoking and drinking alcohol during pregnancy and usually younger mothers that are affected. The mechanism of the disease. During the fourth week of human embryonic development, the lateral body wall folds of the embryo meet at the midline and fuse together to form the anterior body wall. However, in gastroschisis and other anterior body wall defects, this fails to occur by either one or both of the lateral body walls failing to move properly to meet with the other and fusing together. This incomplete fusion results in a defect that allows the abdominal organs to protrude through the abdominal wall and the intestines typically herniate through the rectus abdominal muscles lying to the right of the umbilicus. Because the intestines are not covered by a protective sac and are exposed to the amniotic fluid, the intestines can become irritated causing them to shorten, twist or swell. So if you look at this image above, we have the normal meeting of the lateral body folds. So during the fourth week of gestation, we have these two lateral folds which meet at the midline and form the anterior body wall. But in patients with gastroschisis, this actual process is not carried out in a proper way. Or we can say the process in patients with gastroschisis is incomplete. So down below, I have a picture of what more or less happens. And as you can see, we have the lateral fold from the left side forming all the way, but the lateral fold on the right side, we have sort of a kink here. So it does pull all this way, but it doesn't really pull here. And usually we have a little bit on the right of the umbilicus and then we have this portion where no anterior body has formed. And therefore we have now this orifice or the space or this hole in which the intestines, the liver and bits of the stomach are able to push through and sort of develop outside the body. So another important point that was mentioned here in this slide was that due to the intestines constant contact with the amniotic fluid, it does cause the intestines to swell and usually these patients are unable to have proper digestion because of problems with peristalsis as well as absorption due to the irritation of the bowel loops. The signs and symptoms of gastroschisis. There are actually no signs noted during the pregnancy. So these moms usually have a normal pregnancy without experiencing any signs or symptoms. Approximately 60% of infants with gastroschisis are born prematurely. At birth, the child will have a small, less than 4 cm hole in the abdominal wall, usually just to the right of the belly button. 
So if you look at this image down below, this is an actual patient that was born with gastroschisis and you see just to the right of that umbilicus, we have a hole there in which these loops of bowel have protruded. And you can note here that there's a discoloration, irritation and the swelling of those bowel loops. So they aren't actually going to be able to do their function, which is to digest and absorb the nutrients for the child. Some of the baby's intestines usually protrude through this hole outside the body and in rare cases, the child's liver and stomach may also protrude through this abdominal wall hole. At birth, the gastroschisis is immediately seen and identified by the pediatrician. So usually when this baby is delivered, the physician is able to note the anterior abdominal wall defect and we usually don't have a problem with the diagnosis. After birth, these organs will be directly exposed to the air. So as you can see in this image, these organs are now exposed with the environment to the air and during pregnancy, they are in contact with the amniotic fluid. So is the diagnosis possible before birth? Currently, 90% of cases with gastroschisis is identified during a normal ultrasound screening by the second trimester. So if you look at this ultrasound image to my right, we see the anterior abdominal wall and then we see this bulge, it's sort of like a cauliflower shaped bulge. And that is actually the different loops of bowel that have protruded through that abdominal wall defect and are now in contact with this amniotic fluid that is found all around the baby. So this is actually how we can diagnose a gastroschisis by the second trimester of pregnancy. Lab studies will also show a great elevation of the maternal serum of alpha fetoprotein which is associated with abdominal wall defects. So the alpha fetoprotein levels of the mum will also increase quite a bit and that is another way in which we could think about a possible abdominal wall defect. And finally, the treatment of gastroschisis. An intravenous access must be obtained in which IV fluids, nutrition and antibiotics should be administered. Because these children have these bowel loops that are exposed to the environment, they need antibiotics to prevent any kinds of infection that may occur. Gastroschisis requires surgical treatment to return the exposed intestines into the abdominal cavity and to close the hole in the abdomen. The extent of intestinal dysfunction depends on the magnitude of the inflammatory and ischemic injury caused by the exposure of amniotic fluid and compression of the herniated intestinal mesentery by the abdominal wall defect. So in addition to the intestinal dysfunction due to the exposure of these bowel loops to the amniotic fluid, we can also have ischemic injury because of the tightness or the constriction of this area. So the bowels are actually protruding through this hole and if this hole is too tight around those bowel loops, those portions of bowel will also suffer from ischemic injury. The surgeon will put the bowel back into the abdomen and close the defect if possible. If the abdominal cavity is too small, a mesh sac is stitched around the borders of the defect and the edges of the defect are pulled up. The sac is called a silo and if used should be removed within a week because of the risk of wound infection. With growth, the intestines returns into the abdominal cavity and the defect can be closed. So if you look at this image down below, we have the different stages of the gastroschisis repairing process. And at birth, we see the child is born with those intestines which protrude through that hole near the umbilical cord. In the first step, the intestines are gathered and doctors put the intestines in a silo or a clear sheath of silicone and one end is hung above the body to let gravity ease the intestines into the abdomen. The intestines are then inserted. After several days, surgeons put any remaining intestines back into the body and close up this hole. And of course, we have to continue the IV nutrition because even though we've solved the problem of the exposed intestines, those loops of bowel need some time to rest in order to regain their function due to that inflammation and irritation process. So the baby is fed through a tube until the intestines heal enough to digest the breast milk or formula. And that brings us to the end of this video on gastroschisis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. I hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. If you'd like to download a copy of the presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.